Alrighty guys, so where we left off in the last video, we saw this screen when we were trying to log into the admin app. And the reason why that happens is because, um, uh, probably because we don't have something called the charge ID. So if we go into the database, for example, all right, within the shop record, we go into the shops collection, and then we see we have two shops, two shops here right now. Control shift plus makes it a little bigger, okay. We have over here, tribeapp.myshopify.com. When was it created? Okay, it was just created uh, 0209, uh, updated at the 17th. Do we have a charge ID? Uh, charge ID is an empty string over here, okay? Uh, so if charge ID is an empty string, we can look into the actual code over here. And this is kind of important in terms of just getting yourself oriented with the structure. If we go into the admin backend, we go into controllers, um, and we also go into, I believe it's auth over here, and we're going to do a control F charge ID. All right, so this is a, a function over here called check subscription. It runs every single time that uh, I believe that, that somebody actually logs into the admin app, right? And what it does is it says, hey, you're, you want to try to access this admin app uh, over here, right? Um, within your Shopify store admin. Let's see if you're actually subscribed. And, uh, and that's, um, uh, that's an important feature also because otherwise someone could install your app and then, um, and then just cancel the subscription and then reaccess your app. So this is an important function called check subscription. It checks if they have a charge ID. If he doesn't have a charge ID, it's going to actually run this function which is called uh, helpers get subscription URL. Okay. And that get subscription URL just generates is a uh, talks to GraphQL whatever it says over here. We're gonna uh, we're gonna make the guy an offer of a 15 day trial for 4.99, and you can of course um, uh, uh, right within your own app you can play with play with that section uh, regarding and test out the pricing and all. All right, so fine. Uh, those are the two functions that run. Now that we've explained that, let's actually go ahead and. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and press start the free trial. Okay, so this is actually our front end talking with our back end here. Now, the moment we do start the free trial, okay, I also want to uh, want to want to refresh um, our database uh, query here and see whether it actually worked. Okay, this is. Let's open up our all our different tabs over here. Okay. Mm. Okay, this is, I believe, our admin backend over here, right? Admin backend. Okay, response JSON. It gives you a bunch of logs over here. Uh, all right, let's have a look at our data now. Um, by the way, I, uh, uh, here I can take this, right? And I'm going to actually query for this. So what am I going to say? I'm going to say, I only want one record here where Shopify domain is this. And find it. All right, cool. Uh, let's see. Okay, now let's look at our charge ID. Uh, but we need to find it again. Ah, charge ID is still blank. Hmm. Charge ID is still blank. Let's go back. Okay. Hmm. Why is the charge ID still blank? Uh oh. Man, see that's why. Man, development takes a long time. Uh, it's just they really need to fit. I mean, this is using Next.js, which is supposed to be the recommended way, but mm. okay. Anyhow, it worked. Now let's talk about the feature that we're actually talking about. We go into the settings page here. Okay, it's waiting for it. This is what our Next.js app is doing. Uh, this is our proxy app. This is our Next.js front-end, admin front-end app. All right. I just want to show you exactly the features that we're going to need to build today. Okay. Of course, it's going to take forever. Mm, let's, meanwhile, just get started on the actual code. All right. Um, hmm. All right, this is our admin back end here. This is our admin front end. 
and we're going to go into pages and then settings and index. Okay, this is an important page because it shows us everything we're trying to do today. Let's see. Hmm. Double check that everything is running. Ah, oh, man, it's taking a crazy, crazy am long amount of time. And you do have to be very patient with this type of thing. Uh, okay, well, let's actually go into the Next.js app and see, see what the story is here. Rendered settings component with files empty array. So it looks like something is supposed to be happening over there. Ah, beautiful. After five minutes. Gorgeous. All right. Fine. So that's, uh, th let's actually open it up 100%. All right, this is the feature that we're talking about. Oh, great. What happened now? It's waiting again? Jeez, Ankrok is so slow. It's incredible. Um, all right. Uh, fine, go back into the code. Okay. Uh, and we'll make that... We'll make this bigger. Hopefully, when we come back, it's actually going to be ready. Uh, fine, so guys, this is the settings index page, okay? It's a React component. It's got const settings equals a function which takes in props. By the way, the way that you think about uh, React Next.js components, best way to think about it is every component is just a function which takes some data and returns, returns, returns something in return, right? So, um, uh, and the way to think about it is just each, each component is just rendering a piece of the HTML, right? Okay, cool. Something worked here. Moderation settings here. Would you like to enable customers to auto post or would you like to moderate the content before it goes live? And then it says the current setting, new posts by community members need moderator approval. That's the default setting. And if the customer wants to change it, then you, they can just click just let them post. And when you press uh, just let them post, it changes. The current setting is now community members can post new content without moderator approval, okay? But if they want to change it back, they need to press require approval and so on. All right, guys? So that's kind of the feature that we're going to build out. Um, and uh, so this is, this is what it's going to look like within our admin app. It's going to be within our settings component over here. Uh, let's just have a look at that code quickly to see... Uh, to see what it looks like. Requ ah, okay. Uh, the, the pieces that are currently in place is um, it's something called moderation required. Const moderation required and set moderation required equals use state true. What that means is we're, we're initializing a new state variable at the top of the, fun at the, top of the component. It says it's going to be called moderation required. It's a Boolean. Is moderation required or is it not required? And we also, and within, a, I believe this is called the React hooks. We also set something called um, a, a set moderation required, which is a function which allows us to set this variable of moderation required over there. By default, um, it when the component is initialized, it's going to be set to true, right? Um, but we also have a function over here which says get profile. Um, what that does is it makes a call to the back end and it says get me all the details of the current shop which is logging in and then set all these state variables right the CSS code of the of the shop is X the header image is X and all that data that's coming back from the database and the, the admin back end which is this folder here is then gets propagated straight into the state of this component and um, we're going to also need to set moderation required. It's important that we're going to be backwards compatible also, meaning shops that don't have this moderation required field on their database record, uh, right? We don't want the app to crash just because they don't have that, that field uh, when it comes back from the database. And finally, once, once the state is set over here, then we have, um, we have a, little, a little more code in here which is just this setting toggle over here. So the setting toggle, I believe, is a Polaris component. It's, a, it's brought in at the very beginning, setting toggle. It's brought in by Shopify Polaris, which I believe is just all the styled, styled uh, components, right? Like buttons and stuff like that. Different elements uh, uh, that, make it look, that make it look like it's part of the Shopify admin. Okay, let me do again, require require approval okay 
uh, fine. And this is the content uh, based, uh, depending on what moderation required, the state variable equals, it either, the button text either says let them post or require approval. On action, every time that somebody clicks the button, it, f it runs this function, which is toggle approval setting, dot find this component, and um, uh, hidden, I'm not exactly sure for now. And P, current setting, moderation required, and whatever, okay? And then there's a little P tag, which, is, which tells us wh uh, what text to display. And of course, the, te the text is different based on whether and what, the, what the feature currently is in the database. All right, guys? So that's kind of what we need to do within the admin, within the admin section over here. And, um, and within the next, next video, we're actually going to start thinking about how to connect these things, right? So the moment that we run the get profile function over here uh, at the top of the page, uh, we need to actually make sure that we're getting this moderation required function. And when somebody toggles back and forth, it should update the database. So, uh, right, I believe that's over here. Within this toggle approval settings, we actually need to make um, a request, right? Just send an HTTP request to the back end, which says, uh, with, the, with the new setting, right? And say, hey, this guy does want approval, this guy doesn't want approval. Within our database over here, let's look at the database. We need a new, uh, uh, oh, set moderation required. Okay, so that's already there because I've added it to the, to the model on the back end. Uh, but we should be able to, uh, when the page loads to begin with, and the get profile function is run, we should also be pulling in that variable and dynamically uh, show the setting based on the, the database value. All right, guys, so plenty of stuff to do. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to reach out, and I'll see you in the next one.